right? So there's obviously a number of ways to solve a lot of the questions on this test. And looking at your answer choices and looking at the type of question we're dealing with can help dictate the way in which we can most efficiently get through the question. So in this example, since we don't have to actually nail the values, like we don't have to say exactly what everything is worth, we just have to be able to tell uh, which one is the largest and which one is the smallest and which one's in the middle of these three values. Uh, we do not need to actually calculate the values, but we might be better off by just trying to estimate. And so if I look at what we have here, we end up finding out that M plus W plus C equals one. And I think of that as like, if they were each fractions, they would add up to a total of 100%. So imagine these are each percentages. Well, 9 25 is the same as 36 over 100. Because whatever I need to multiply the bottom by to get to 100 is what I'll multiply the top by. And to get 25 to equal 100, I would multiply by four. So I'd multiply the top by four as well, which means it's worth 36% exactly. It's a little trickier with 32, but in order to get to 100, I wanna multiply by three-ish. So I'd multiply the top by three-ish as well, which would give me 45 over 96. Now the bottom is less than 100, which means I would need to have multiplied by something bigger than three to get 100 on the bottom, which would have given me something even bigger than 45 on top. So this is something greater than 45%. Now, if I'm adding 36 and 45 together, I'm going to end up with a total of 81%. And even, even if this is an underestimation, which it is because I'm supposed to use something larger than 45, that would only leave me with 19% left for C in order for all three of them to add up to 100%. So that means that the largest of these values is W and the smallest of these values is C and the M, the 36% is somewhere in the middle. And so in increasing order, it goes C, M, W, which is our answer choice A.